And that was the final enemy, too. So, you guys could... Well, you could imagine my frustration at that, but I didn't pay attention that that was the last enemy. So let's upgrade our ranged skill. Activate the switch to open the lock. I hope it still works. It looks a little rusty. Actually, if I remember correctly what I was thinking about this, I was thinking about the ability that was on the far left. And that needs two points in order to level up. So I was thinking I need two points to level that up so I can actually level it up. So, yeah, that's that was my thinking behind that. But I think the ranged one is actually very useful. <laughs> There's the artifact again. Fight some more. What else is there that I can talk about? Um, since I was on the topic of League of Legends earlier, um, what do you guys think about the new ultimate skin for League of Legends, which is Elementalist Lux? For me personally, I think Lux was long overdue to get some love with a legendary skin or an ultimate skin. Because most of her other skins were just basic skins. Until she got the Steel Legion Lux skin, which changed it up slightly but not slightly enough. Then Star Guardian Lux came out. And that, I think, was perfect skin for Lux. Lux needed a skin like that. And then they announced Elementalist Lux, just like three days ago as of this recording. Which, I'm recording this on November 10th. So, yeah. What do you guys think about Elementalist Lux? I think this this is probably as of the as of now the ultimate ultimate skin. It is the ultimate ultimate skin out there. Cause if you actually look at the other ultimate skins, Ezreal had four forms, Sona had three, Udyr had eight, and Lux has ten. Lux has 10 different forms for her ultimate skin. That enough is just like, whoa! But all the forms actually look really good. And you can upgrade them on a whim. So, what do you guys think about Elementalist Lux? Do you like it or dislike it? And if you guys like it, why do you like it? And if you dislike it, why do you dislike it? I'm actually pretty curious about this one. Because DJ Sona, I thought they went a little tiny bit overboard with it and a little bit underboard with it. Because with DJ Sona, I think they should have still had it evolve like the other skins did. But it had three different forms to it, so I wasn't too concerned about that. But, what set it apart from other ultimate skins? What set it apart was the fact that each um, form had three different styles of music to it that you could actually tune into. Because it's not just you 
that can listen to it. It's your teammates as well. And I just died again. Great. Ugh. And then you have Pulsefire Ezreal, which was their first attempt at an ultimate skin. And... Honestly, I think it's a little bit underwhelming. But it was their first ultimate skin, so I think it's still pretty good. For being a first ultimate skin. Is it worth the price of an ultimate skin now? Mm, not exactly, but... If you actually look at it, I think a good price for it would be like 2500 And this is where I actually get the um, good uh, horizontal shot. And the horizontal shot actually goes and um, stuns enemies in the area. So it actually is really useful. <clears throat> um, but back to Pulsefire Ezreal, it's, I don't think it's a, enough to be an ultimate skin, but it's not lacking enough to be a legendary skin. And there's no in between, so it has to be an ultimate skin. Because along with Pulsefire Ezreal's four forms, you actually have different animations, and every time you kill a minion, they disintegrate instead of, um, they disintegrate instead of die, and overall I think Legend the Pulsefire Ezreal skin is pretty good. If it didn't have the, um, if it didn't have the multiple evolutions of it evolving, it could probably be a legendary skin. But it has that, so I think it's good for an ultimate skin. Spirit Guard Udyr. Once you level up one of his abilities, he evolves uh, with that. So, you have a model for when he first starts out with the um, ability, and then once you reach level 5 with that same ability, that that model then evolves into a different model. And that happens on all four of his forms, Phoenix, Turtle, um, Phoenix, Turtle, Tiger, and Bear. Stance, and I just died again. Yay! Fun, right? That's why I'm talking about League of Legends. Cause I die a lot in this. I don't, and I, I don't even want to pay attention to it. <laughs> I don't want to pay attention to it right now, cause it's so bad. But um, Spear Guard Udir actually is worth a legendary skin, uh, worth an ultimate skin. I mean. It's worth an ultimate skin, and I think it's really good for it. Um. So, Elementalist Lux, I actually think is the definitive ultimate skin. If they can do better than that, okay, go for it. But if they can't, then... Elementalist Lux will be the ultimate, ultimate skin. And it does seem like it's going to be the ultimate, ultimate skin. Because if you have more than 10 forms in on a certain character, how would you do that and not push the limits of the system? I think that's why it took... Elementalist Lux so long to come out because <clears throat> because it actually um I think it took so long to come out because 
go. Go. Sorry about that. But, um, I think it took Elementalist Lux so long to come out just for the fact that it had so much going on with it. And it had a bunch of thought going into it. So, I don't know if it's going to be the ultimate, ultimate skin, or if Riot can actually do a better ultimate skin than that. And that's what the um, gun upgrade does. It's a horizontal uh, wave, and it goes through objects, and it does damage, and it stuns enemies. It stuns different enemies at different times, for different times, but it actually does allow you to pretty much go do some damage and stay back as well when when you go get low on health like I am right now. Ugh, <clears throat> <sighs> wave two complete. Alright. And that's my League of Legends Ultimate Skin rant. Kind of. Um. While we're still on the topic of League of Legends, actually, what is Riot's deal with 1350 RP skins? Because it seems that they do almost every single patch has one of these. Almost every single patch had a 1350 skin, and almost every single champion now starts off with a 1350 skin. And some of them, like um, Arlie and Soul, people don't even use it. Like, I'm the only person that uses the Ashen Lord Arlie and Soul skin. I've never seen anyone else use it in game. And it's like. Why make a 1350 skin for a champion that you don't even know is going to be used? For example, um, Lissandra. A lot of people, I, I, I would probably say Lissandra, and people would probably not know who that is. And Lissandra is the Ice Queen, and, um,. <clears throat> She started off with a 9 975 skin, which I expect from every other champion that comes out, which should be the case, but isn't. And then she came out with two 1350 skins, which I have no idea why, but they did. And on top of that, people don't use her too often. If I remember correctly, people don't use her too often. I strike from the <clears throat> It's like, ah, uh, why do they do 1350 skins for, for characters that aren't used too much? And the people that are used a lot, why do they not go and make good skins for them? Like, for example, Twisted Fate. He doesn't have a single skin that is above 975. Um, and Twisted Fate is used quite a bit. Especially in, like, a ram, which is all random, all mid. But, other than that, jeez! Why are they, why do they make 13, a lot of 1350 skins for champions that they don't even know are going to succeed? <clears throat> like, for example, the last, I think, um... Five to seven champions. Actually, not putting it in this perspective. Every pretty, and this is just an estimation. I can't remember what the actual number is. But you take one out of ten of the new champions that um, Riot makes for League of Legends, and at most. Two of them would have 975 for their first skin. All the others would have 1350. Because one of them that I 
thought would actually be a big skin for them, Kled, he doesn't have a 1350 skin, he has a 975 starting skin. And now that we're not on the repetitive part of Ruby Grim Eclipse, we actually are in a new area! Hooray! And we actually succeeded at that uh, stupid thing. Yay! Ugh. So, I think at this point I have the strategy for dealing with these guys down pat. So, what I do is I stun them with my ability and then use my Y to go and deal a massive amount of damage to them and almost immediately take them down. Okay, stun, attack, die. <clears throat> there we go. And this guy is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Because he isn't stunned that long. He's like stunned for like two, two milliseconds. There we go. I strike from the shadows. Another battle won. And there's a box over there with experience in it. Hooray! And there's another box with experience over there. And there's also an artifact. I didn't see the box, but I saw the artifact. Huh. Look at this. So, let's see. Can I jump through the window and be really cool? No, I cannot. So, we have to go around the building. <sighs> and my dogs are apparently having a fight with a beanbag. That's what it sounds like, at least. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, but my dogs are having a fight with a beanbag. Yay! Let's see if I can level up. Nope. I can't cut grass. And... My dog just ran in here for some reason. Yeah, <coughs> that's the facility. I can't believe how well it withstood the years. A shame still. Dr. Malo would have never let something like this hinder the progress of his work. I can only imagine what we'll find. Oh yeah. Watch out, team. The treasure hunt will have to wait until you kill those Grim. Die, Grim, die. <coughs> Die, everything! Die! Level up! <clears throat> oh, and there's five of them now! Yay! Every time. Yay, I killed three more of them. There we go. All right. Hey, panda guy. Now, this is an upgraded panda guy. Panda Grim Finger Mahuse. If I... Oh, no. It's not this one. Never mind. This is a panda guy. This is just the regular old panda guy. And I kind of spoiled what happens after this. Oops. And those two boxes, and there's experience. Yay! And this is where I discover the power of dodging! And this is the big panda guy that I was talking about. This guy can take a real beating. It is ridiculous. But at the end I, of this fight, I actually figured out how to fight him. Once he does that big earth shatter that he does, that goes all around him, go up to him and fight him. Because that is when he exposes his weak spot. I don't do that. 
in this fight, hence it taking me a very long time to beat this guy. And I figure out the power of dodging as well. <clears throat> but yeah, look, I only have a quarter of his health out. And this actually goes a lot faster, it looks like, to um, actually um, move. Because it looks like... Um, it actually looks like that... Um, wait, what am I... Oh, that's what I was saying. <laughs> I got distracted, sorry. Um, it looks like that if you dodge while you're in the air, it actually goes and um, makes you move a lot faster. That's what it looks like to me at least. So pretty much we are fighting this boss, and this is the big boss, yay. Is that a tall joke? He doesn't like that tall joke apparently. Uh, he really does not like that tall joke. Also, if you notice, every time he you hit him, he goes and blocks it for the most part. And that reduces his damage. So once he does this, you should go and attack him. Because what I try to do at, after this is um, try to get behind him. That's pretty much uh, what I'm going to do in like two seconds or something like that. And I'm like, you can't get behind him, so that can't be his weakness. But you can get behind him because if he goes and uses his ability, that ability, you can actually get behind him. That's not his weakness, but his weakness is he uses the ability and exposes his weak point. So after that, you should attack him a lot with your physical attacks, not your gun. Because your gun snaps him out of his weak point. And there goes the phone again. But, um... <clears throat> I can't stop this audio recording! Dang it! But, um... With thing... With... With what this is... I think this boss is, like, oh my gosh, very long. I think there, his health could have been down, toned down a little bit. But I think they wanted this to be, a, like, a big fantastic boss for Chapter 3. So, they succeeded in doing that. They definitely succeeded in having a very good boss fight for the very end of this. <clears throat> and why is that person still calling me? Because I need to finish this recording. Arrgh. Yep, it's still the same person, and I know who it is. That person needs to calm down. Ah. <clears throat> there we go, finally. Finally killed him. And the building falls. Great. And at this point, I'm like, wait, what? Uh, did I just die or something? Did I take too long? Whatever. But no, that's actually supposed to happen. That actually gets you to below the surface, which is the next area that we will be going to in the next episode. So this has been Psychic Pictures, and I'll see you guys next time.